What's up all you minties, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an overview of Joe Jusco's Marvel Masterpieces hardcover and the art of painted comics. So please stay tuned. Now before getting started, I need to do two things. Number one is give a big thank you to Derek for sending me these books last year to let me do this overview. He knows I'm a big fan of art books and was wondering if I had these and he sent them my way. And the second thing I need to do is apologize because I've had these books underneath other books and in the process of moving things around the house, I found these and I thought, oh my gosh, I forgot to set these aside to do an overview. And Derek is such a gentleman, he never reminded me again uh, outside of the one time uh, when I made the mistake of, that I thought we were uh, supposed to give these away. So they will be going back to him and again, big thank you and apologies. So. Uh, what he sent me is Joe Jusco's Marvel Masterpieces. This was printed by IDW and then The Art of Painted Comics. So we're going to be taking a look at inside of these books here in a second. Uh, both of these are hardcovers. Here's what the spine looks like on the Joe Jusco's Marvel Masterpieces. And then what the spine looks like in The Art of Painted Comics. And then the backs of each of these books. To kind of give you an idea of the size of them, here is an omnibus. So this is a Marvel omnibus, so both of them are taller and wider. And retelling, this one for $59.99, and this one for $49.99. Uh, no dust jackets. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Marvel Masterpieces first. Alright, so let's get this open. We have this image of Magneto there, and all of this, of course, painted by Joe Jusco. Some of you may be familiar with that name because of the Marvel trading cards. So honestly, that's the reason why I was familiar with this name. There's an introduction here by Bill Sienkiewicz. And then the contents, so telling you where you... Oh, it's all in alphabetical order, too. Nice. So there's main cards. So these are the trading cards, the art of the trading cards. Then canvas cards and battle cards. We're not going to go through each one of these. Oh, new cards and sketch cards. Cool. But we're going to go through some of them. Oh, that is cool. So I swear, these have been in a box and I haven't had a chance to freaking look at them. Uh, so you have Adam Warlock. And here's a little, um, just a little recall on Joe Jusco talking about Adam Warlock. Some of the sketch and how it all came together. There's my favorite X-Villain, Apocalypse. Just look at all that rage in that face. So he's saying the only other time he painted Apocalypse was in the 1992 Marvel Masterpieces. Yeah, those are the ones I used to have. That is a cool beast. Okay, this is a badass book. Man, that is cool, dude. Black Bolt here. Let's skip some around. Got to get to Wolverine. There's Cable. Deadpool. So this was painted in 2014. And Falcon, of course. Just jumping around. Havoc. That is cool. So he's talking about the challenge of doing the effects of Havoc's blast there. Jean Grey. It's interesting that he went with a classic Jean Grey look. Legion. A lot of mutants. Speaking of mutants, Magneto. There we go. There's Mary Jane. And Medusa. That's cool. Ultron. And Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say, I know C comes before you. Why is this here? Well, let's get to Wolverine first. Yeah. It's the astonishing... Um costume there hollow so then we go into the hollow foil cards i assume these were hollow foils like it stated that was a stupid statement all right here we go cyclops with his uncanny design by chris bacalo or bacello sorry there's professor x yeah i see that side booty there scarlet witch i see you i see you then we have the canvas cards these are the ones i was wondering about Oh, that's cool. I love the sketch. Oh, man, Cyclops getting a lot of love in this. I love the sketches because sometimes, like, their faces look a little bit different or the way their bodies are laid out are a little bit different. That is, that's awesome. Okay, now that I take a closer look at this page, 
looks a little bit different right without all the warnings like you can actually pay attention to just the artwork and you can see how much detail he puts into it before doing the paints juice goes the man and then battle cards oh okay. this is cool so you got juggernaut versus colossus and i guess at one time it was going to be juggernaut versus the hulk it's cool that it started that way there's two classic feral characters and we have this classic fight Drax, uh, okay. Even though it was movie Drax, this is the DNA Drax is what I like to call it during the DNA years. Morlin, of course, versus Spidey. I was going to say, I'd like to have seen a Venom versus Spidey, but this is cool too. The Carnage versus Venom. Maybe let's skip around a little bit. Bullseye versus Daredevil there. Is that Vulcan? Yeah. New cards. So let's just do a couple of these. And that is a nice Valkyrie. And these are sketches. I assume that he's collected throughout the years. He, okay, he has the state for sketch cards. That's interesting. So these are something like you usually find at conventions where people do for you. Step-by-step -step process. Now this is what I like to see. A little bit of the behind the scenes here. On how it all comes together. And then, of course, compare it to the... Wow, that is a lot. So he's working in just different layers. And then what the final product looks like, that is cool. And then just a little bio on Joe Jusco. Now, this one has a little bit over 330 pages. Now, let's look at the next book. And, of course, in case you're wondering, it is sewn binding. And speaking of sewn binding, so is this one here. This is printed by Dynamite. It's written by Christopher Lawrence. And afterward and cover art are by Alex Ross. So then you have it in different categories. Pulp Fiction, From Cloaks to Capes, A Golden Age, Rise of the Paperback, Magazine Covers, Comics, Dark Ages, Coloring Cards. Oh, that's cool. Um, so there is an introduction, sorry about that, by Christopher Lawrence. And then some of the pulp comic covers here. And then just the history on them. This is cool to see a lot of these uh, covers that I've never seen before. You forget how long comics have been around. Is that Doc Savage? Origins of Marvel Comics by Stan Lee. The paperback collections. So they give the credits here. This is Reed Can uh, Crandall. From EC Shock. That's of course the popular cover that got the comics code and the whole innocent seduction of the innocent book printed. Mad Magazine. Oh, yes, Creepy had some of the best and just creepiest uh, covers, I always thought. More so than Tales from the Crypt or Vault of Horror or Haunt of Fear. That's cool. So that's definitely Ferrigno there. And that's definitely Walter Simonson. Let's see here. Yeah, Walter Simonson. Big John Buscema. You can always tell his sketchy look. And there it is, painted. And this Okay, and then they're going through different artist profiles. So this is Bob Larkin. Whew. What is up, little Annie Fanny? Turok. Making sure I can show that. Just, just making sure. I think this is from the Spectacular Spider-Man, maybe? Let's see here. Uh, Marvel Superheroes Portfolios when a goblin comes a-calling. This is from 1980. Okay. Heavy Metal. Yes! This is the stuff I used to hide underneath my bed. I used to have this one here. I love that cover. That is by Olivia. Then, of course, this is probably the most famous one because a lot of people relate that image to the, uh, the movie. There's Charles Vess right there. That's Mobius for sure. Yeah, that is so cool. I'm just going to skip around a little bit to get to the Alex Ross stuff. It's a lot of Alex Ross, I'm sure, in here. This is a cool book, man. Now, this one here has three, um, almost 400 pages. And it does have sewn binding. Laurel Bletchman. Man, that is a cool freaking Ghost Rider. 
Man, that Dan Brereton, of course. You can always tell. I don't know what it is about his his mouths. Matt Bush. Joe Chen. Man, I wonder where she is. She was a phenomenal cover artist for Street Fighter and Buffy and then Runaways. Duncan Fregredo. I remember him doing a lot and uh, of these, like, um, tangled web stories. Uh, James Jean, of course, famous for probably selling the most expensive comic book piece up until recently really or comic uh cover uh which was the fables the was the 1001 nights cover that he, he sold yeah dave johnson of course i love this this is awesome i mean i wish they could focus a little more like more than a couple of pages on these artists but i get it there's just so many people that have painted comics over the years you can't really just stick to making 10 pages about somebody and there's just names here I haven't seen in such a long time. Jill. Jill's been around forever. She's a great artist, too. John Van Fleet. Ashley Wood. Kent Williams. Yeah. I remember it. <laughs> That's uh, Kent Williams' Wolverine. Adam Hughes, of course. And then the evolution continues. Uh, Frizen, right? Yeah. Jenny Frizen. Choi up there. Addy Granov. And then you have an afterword here by Alex Ross. 392 pages, I'm sorry. And then the references. And that, as they say, is that. And let me know in the comments down below if you love art books as much as Derek and I do. If you're never picked one up. I'm always curious if uh, people that love comics haven't picked one up. And if you do enjoy art books, what are some of your favorite ones? It doesn't necessarily have to be with comics. It could be movies or TV shows or just art books in general. And again, if you have any more questions, leave them down below. And again, one more time, a big huge thank you to Derek for letting me borrow these books to do this overview. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Everyone stay healthy, stay safe, much love.